There you go. Hi. Hi. How are you, Tanya? I'm so awesome. How are you? Good, thanks. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Tanya Wolford. She is a death doula. I am. I have been excited to do this little uh, interview with you because I want to know more about what it is that you do. So and Definitely. tell everybody else what it is that you do. Definitely. So part of my goal is to have positive conversations around death and dying so that you are prepared and don't have death hanging over your shoulders. Um, and so we will we can obviously we spend time with people that are passing we spend time with their families we do advanced care plans um, part of the scope of practice is to document and communicate effectively um, how people want to pass away um, so those kinds of things so for example if there's a particular you know a, you really like the smell of fresh laundry we can help you write that into your advanced care plan so that you can communicate that with your family um, and so that if you are in active dying then you have access to those smells and we come up with really creative ways to be able to do that and of course within facilities as well so we can diffuse essential oils um, you know just stuff like that really interesting and unique ways so that you can have a good death that's really interesting so say for instance you know I'm this very young 46 year old uh, and would I contact you now? Um, and you know, we never know when we're going to die, but right. if I'm anticipating that I'm going to live a long life, when should I contact you? Do you know what? Honestly, we want to work with you holistically throughout your life. And so contact me now, contact me at any time. Your life at 20 looks a lot different at 25 and at a spry 46, it looks different when you're 65. And so as your life changes, so will your values, how you see things, your experiences, all of those things shape your life. And so that will change. If you're 20 years old, you may not be concerned about who's plucking the chin hairs when you're in a hospital bed. But when you're 46, that may bother you and you don't want your spouse coming anywhere near you with a set of tweezers, right? So life changes, you have children, um, there's, you know, divorces, all of that kind of stuff factors into these things. And so what I do is I sit with you and I want to become kind of a friend, a confidant. And so then I will travel with you throughout your life, making sure that your wishes are documented, communicated um, to your family, to whomever wants to do that, and that you feel comfortable about the death process, as comfortable as you can be, because it is scary, of course. Well, like we both say, you know, we're not going to get out of here alive. So it's really about who we are through this rather than um, the legacy that we leave behind, especially when we haven't conveyed or had the conversations with our loved ones when we do die. Yes, yes. And we do uh, legacy projects as well with people. And so there's all kinds of really unique ways to honor a life, honor a life with somebody after somebody has passed. Um, death and dying are something that is very personal and handled differently throughout um, throughout your life and, and for everyone. And so if you've had somebody that passed away, say five years ago, and you don't feel like you have dealt with that properly, there are things that you can do presently to help you come to terms with those things as well. So all kinds of really unique things that I do. So really the death doula is not necessarily just before death or throughout your life. It can be after someone's death as well. Yes, yeah, because I am, I'm really comfortable talking about mortality, obviously I'm comfortable talking about death and dying and processes, but I think it's, it's really important just to embrace that. And so that's why I said this death positivity, right? So that's a buzzword right now that's going on is death positivity. But what it truly means is to be able to have a conversation and they don't have to to be morbid they don't have to be scary they don't have to be sad you just have to be informed and knowledge is truly power so once you know something and you're a little bit comfortable with it then it's okay and because i am who i am and our scope of practice we just make it so that it's a bit of a warmer communication rather than you know a, with a doctor or with you know that kind of stuff we we have the time to sit with you and and do a warmer communication so that you feel more comfortable with it and i'm super funny too 
Right. That's why I just love you. Um, you know, so many, and, and not until this moment in talking with someone that does not necessarily the same thing I do, but, you know, addresses this death topic. I just, I want to sit here and I, I'm just so fascinated. And, and I get it now when people come up to me and like, oh, wow. So how did you become a medium? How did you become a death doula? Yes, it is crazy. So I had quite the journey. I always knew that there was something uh, different about me. I did work in healthcare and I did do end of life care when I was working with people in healthcare setting. And then I left healthcare for a while and I went into media and marketing and sales, which I love all of those things, but I still felt like something was missing in my life. I've always felt that way. And I've always been a little bit quirky, like I do, you know, new moon ceremonies and all that stuff because it's all about the energy right and so I had had a series not just one a series of losses in my life and I had gone out seeking something some sort of comfort what do we do now how do we handle these things and there was nothing like the expectation that society puts on you in, in a death is so terrible like you have this expectation to be sad and to grieve and you're supposed to eat casseroles for six months not everybody feels that way like you still have to go and do things right and you still want to and it's okay to smile and it's okay to laugh and tell a joke and you know do whatever it's all okay and so that was the start of my journey um i was working with my reiki master she said i suggest that you do this because you are so intertwined with death and dying that I think you need to do this so she introduced me to it and I thought it was just meant to be it was my aha moment right I walked mm -hmm. into work that afternoon and I told everybody at work that I was going to become a death doula everybody said I was crazy I said no this is my soul's purpose this is what I'm doing um, signed up for a course there's actual education that you can take so I'm a certified death doula so I took a course through Douglas College um, started my business all that kind of stuff all in a really short period of time and so it's been within a year that I'm like okay this is this is my soul's purpose this is what I'm doing and go right have yeah, been wow. just so warmly received throughout the community so the funeral industry um, friends family everybody everybody's like wow this this is missing this is missing in our society thank you for you know making this happen because it is missing in our society you certainly are a pioneer for sure in this and and when we met through um, how we, I think I was in what, we're in Lethbridge or something and we had a private yes. reading. Yes. And um, yeah, it was a real pleasure to meet you. And it's just, we, we had talked to think a little bit about that and I've always just kept in touch. And yes, then, yeah. yes, it was, it was, that was how we had met. And uh, you just really encouraged me to just embrace who I am. And so many people, not just you, but so many people have also encouraged me. Um, and as we should, we should accept everybody's uniqueness and encourage those things in others. That's how our society works and that's how it should work. And so, yes, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, I, I do have one question. Yes. So, Oftentimes when I use a little bit like in a private reading, I'm going to go, okay, well, if you were to die in five years, what are the top three things that you would do? Everybody picks number one, travel. Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, I could spiel on about that forever, but my question to you is, what is the most requested piece for you with your clients? What's their first thing they often, or you find that is similar between many? Um, really just like connectivity. So connection, I think is the standard throughout. So people are worried about, and this is a good lesson for what we're going through right now. Um, people are worried about uh, going to work and paying bills and, you know, doing all those kinds of things. And people are like a top regret is connection. I missed my son's baseball game. I missed my daughter's ballet you know, I didn't call my mom and I didn't talk to her because I was busy and, you know, those kinds of things. So connection and connecting with the people we love, um, 
letting go of stupid things. Like don't be mad at somebody for no reason. It's not that important in the grand scheme of things. Um, and we do activities about that as well. So we do activities about mortality. I hold death cafes where people can actually have those conversations as well. So it's just a fun way to get people more, um, I guess, accepting of mortality in a more positive way, right? So yeah. <laughs> You know, what was interesting last night, I was sitting here because I have an array of workshops that I'm putting on now, and I wrote down the title of it, Let's Talk About Death, Baby. Yes. And, uh, I think, you know what we should do? <laughs> we should probably put on, you know, an actual uh, video webinar so that people yes. can ask questions and actually talk about death. Would you be interested in doing that? Yes, 100%. Totally. Okay, excellent. So we'll be in touch. Now, how can people find you? Uh, my website. So that's the easiest way to find me. It's deathpositivemovement.ca. Wow. And on there, they can find out everything that you do. Yes. So there's a list of services. Um, again, I really stress and I stress on the website as well that the journey is personalized. And so because no life is the same, no death is the same. Everybody is unique. And so I really believe in embracing that. And so, yes, every journey is personal. What works for you won't work for somebody else. But it's good that everybody has the opportunity to have that conversation. So Excellent. Yeah. Well, I am so glad we were able to connect yes. in this busy time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy. And what's interesting is that I am actually, I'm pretty okay with what is, is going on right now because I spend, well, I've been socially awkward for my whole life. So, right? Right? <laughs> so it's okay. Um, but I've been able to spend just a little bit more time in reflection. Um, I've been meditating. I've been doing those kinds of things. I'm also a Reiki practitioner. So spending time with energy and feeling the shift because it's, that is something that I'm very sensitive to. And I can tell you that there is, you know, with all of the fear and stuff like that, there is a shift for good as well. So people are starting to be more relaxed and I can feel that throughout. It's just a little bit more, you know, just a level down, not so stressed about, you know, waking up and getting to work on time and sucking back a pot of coffee and, you know, those kinds of things. And so just the general, you know, vibrational energy has settled down. I think this, this moment in time, we're going to look back at it. It's going to be crazy. I know people are hurting, but I know that there's going to be a lot of good that yeah, comes yeah. out of this. I totally yes. understand, but we all have our process and right. you know, I had to go through mine last week and yes. this week it's been, you know, pounding out ideas and, yes. you know, there's a, there's a shift in the world right now because there has to be a shift in the world. Right, right. And yeah. what's, I mean, I had said this a long time ago because grief, um, grief and loss has a really unique way of attacking our nervous system. And that's what we're feeling right now. So we are going through grief. Our jobs have been taken away. We've lost money. We've lost, you know, so many things so the process and what we're feeling are the same as grief it's still the same feelings to our bodies to ourselves to our souls right so i mean we've, we've been there we'll get through this we're all in it together and i wish everybody nothing but love well thank you i appreciate your time and yes let's get something booked and uh let's get some people involved awesome thank you so much pleasure, Tanya. okay take care okay thank you bye, -bye.